We're going to bring in Michelle Krebs, who both Matt and I have known for a long time. And uh, she's uh, with Auto Trader, has an extensive auto background. Really, I, I see her all the time. On, you know, when someone needs uh, the analysis of an expert, it's like David Cole or it's Michelle Krebs. You know, they go to those two <laughs> folks, right? So Round up the usual suspects. That's right. Yes, suspects. all the that's usual right. suspects. Yes, yeah, that's right. But that. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about that darn pesky chip shortage, which seems to continue to plague the auto industry. And I know there's been some uh, governmental, federal level yeah, issues there. They're trying to beef up the the semiconductor industry so that we could deal with this. But I, that's going to take a while to get that done, right? Yeah. So you know, let's back up. Um, I think it's been an, an amazing year for the auto industry uh, beyond what we could have expected. So we hit, you know, we got COVID, factories closed down all over the world, dealerships closed down, just basically shut down sales for a short period and manufacturing for a while. And the automakers, of course, saw economic recession coming uh, because of the pandemic and they, they panicked, um, many of them, and canceled a lot of their chip orders. Well, consumer demand has just been remarkable. Um, consumers have come right back to the market. They were There were big incentives last April to get them there. Zero uh, percent financing was hugely popular. And, you know, the factories were just slowly ramping up and they, they hadn't caught up even by the end of the year. And then the chip shortage happened and consumer demand continued. Uh, production has had to be shut down here and there as uh, automakers uh, adjust their schedules to uh, deal with the chip shortage. And so now we're in this position of consumer demand is really strong. Uh, production's improving, but we're having a lot of these interruptions. Um, and by the way, if you're going out to find a car, they're hard to find and they're very expensive. We're seeing the highest prices on used and new vehicles that we've seen ever. So it's um, we think maybe the worst is over or will it'll be a very tight summer, but we think maybe production will uh, pick up and chip production will be chips will become more available, but it's hard to know. Are the uh, uh, are the lots still jam packed with vehicles waiting? Oh no, the they're empty. <laughs> oh, they're empty now. If you okay. if you drive around and look at some of the the lots, what dealers do is something very clever instead of. Uh, putting they, they're putting uh, vehicles sideways so that it looks like they have a lot of vehicles but if you look in the center of the um the lots there you see empty pavement oh uh, okay yeah so it's the lowest inventories we've ever seen so it's it's the perfect supply demand economics playing out that you could imagine hmm. so so how many i mean what are what are the what caused the chip shortage and uh you know what are chips used for in cars i think a lot of people don't understand just how computerized everything oh, is on a car now everything i mean uh there are chips used in the um engine control system that controls your you know the fuel uh that goes into the vehicle and then of course there's all the features that we have on you know your uh, all the comfort features, the infotainment systems. I, I think I've I've read that there's about on a luxury car there might be 150 chips in wow. per vehicle. Huh. So and you know well the, it was caused by the fact that chip factories had to close down and then uh, automakers canceled their orders or the suppliers that supply to the automakers cancel their orders and then they want those orders back. Well then chips were uh, in great demand by video game companies, phone makers, uh, uh, computer makers, because we were all working at home. So um, it was just a lot of things that piled up. I believe the feds have earmarked some money to go into rebuilding the semiconductor industry in the States. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. The, so $52 billion has been approved to uh, you know, boost uh, production. Part of the problem is we don't produce chips here. Very, very few. And so they're, um, you're going to see a lot of buying for position by municipalities to get chip plants. There are a couple being built in Arizona. There's one being built in um, Texas. But, you know, it's going to take time for those to be built and get back online. Taiwan is the biggest the maker of chips. Huh. And then EVs, we want to talk about those. Seems like everybody is building an EV. Uh, we just had the the F one fifty EV, a little on the pricey side for the average Joe, around forty grand starting out. Uh, but what do you think of it? 
Well, I think the, the Ford Lightning, uh, the electric uh, F-150 is uh, very smart. Actually, $40,000 isn't so much for a truck. The average F-150 costs $50,000. It doesn't yeah. take much to yeah, get I don't to know. I don't know so. if you've built and you have gone on the uh, configurator and built and priced one lately, but I, I was looking at a Ram diesel truck and it was like $55,000 right. and that was only okay equipped. You know? Right. I mean, right. Wow. Yeah. The average price of a Ram is around $50,000. So yeah. So every, every automaker has an electric vehicle strategy. We're seeing some of those accelerated because uh, there's hope that the Biden uh, uh, infrastructure proposal will get through. And that includes uh, the building of 500,000 EV chargers across the country. Hmm. And the charging issue is one of the big obstacles to people buying EVs. So we're seeing, we're seeing more and more come to market. Um, they tend to still be a little pricey and that's, that's another obstacle, but um, there have been some proposals made to offer some tax credits, particularly to middle-class Americans, not just rich people who can afford the fancy EVs. So yeah. And the uh, other issue, is, the, go, the, other, but, the other issues range. I mean, yes. they don't really have that much range, do they? 150 well, they're miles getting way mile? better. I mean, but, but to pay for that. So, you know, yeah. there are some that I think it's the uh, mini EV that has about, uh, it's the lowest priced one. It has, I think a hundred and some miles of range, but they're getting up in the 300 mile uh, and, and pushing, you know, knocking on the door, 400,000 mile range, you just pay more for that range. But mm -hmm. if you have a charging infrastructure, a fast charging infrastructure, the range becomes less of an issue. Yeah. They're just not practical for cross country trips or, or very not long yet. trips. You know, not I mean, yet. if you're going to do short trips or commuting, you're okay with that. But that's why I like the hybrids because when they ran out of electricity, they switched over to gas, you know, and then they could keep going. But those are really out of favor now. You don't hear much about that. Oh, no, that's not true. They're actually selling very, very well. Oh, they are. Okay. Uh, yes, right. hybrids are selling very well. Um, and, so how do, you think and, the, uh, how do you think the Ford Maverick's going to do? Oh, I think it's going to do really well. And I think because I think it's an interesting package. It's an interesting price point. For those that don't know, it's a small pickup truck that is supposed to start at $20,000. And its standard powertrain is uh, a hybrid. You can order a gas only uh, separately, but... I think that was a really smart move. And and Ford's doing, you know, hybrids across the line. Toyota's doing Toyota RAV4 hybrid you can't keep in stock. So it's um they they they've done really well. Yeah. 25% of uh Toyota's sales are now uh electrified vehicle vehicles which is mostly hybrids. Hmm, interesting. And then there's the connected vehicles or uh, automa automated vehicles, or all those sort of everything is technical these days. How are they doing? And takes a lot of chips. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it was interesting during the pandemic, things kind of quieted down for autonomous vehicles, but, and I think we're starting to see that um, gear up again. Um, you know, General Motors is doing a lot of work in San Francisco with its cruise automation on a, a shuttle called the Origin, uh, Honda's a partner, so that's going on. Waymo still probably way out in front. Um, they're doing, you know, they are they have operations in, where you can catch a ride with a, in a Waymo out in uh, Phoenix. We're seeing a lot of uh, focus on moving goods. I think that was one of the big lessons from COVID. And we're seeing a lot of uh, activity in um, autonomous driving in um, like trucks, long haul trucks, that kind of thing. I think it's going to be more fleets than at least initially. You're not going to have one in your garage probably anytime soon. Ah, well, yeah. So, so do you feel the same way about electric vehicles as they roll out? Is it is it going to be a, a lot of fleet usage and uh, yes, you I, know, I like think, delivery I think vehicles and postal vehicles and stuff like that? Sure. And think about you know an energy company. They're you know, I think you're going to see fleets, and that I think that's a really good move because it has the biggest hit for the uh, environment. You, 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 you're, first of all, you're selling to one person a whole lot of vehicles instead of selling one at a time. And um, you know, you're improving the uh, environment um, in, in a big bang like that. I know Amazon's committed to buying 100,000 electric, uh, whatever you want to call them, shuttle devices. I mean, you see them all over the place, different mm -hmm. sizes, the little ones, the big ones, uh, but they're committed to buy 100,000 of those electric ones. And a lot of other companies are, are uh, committing to that too. Just Amazon has a lot of obvious vehicles. So right. um, yeah, I think that's the way that they, 
that will get the numbers up in that way. And I think you will learn a lot because in an, a fleet environment, it's a predictable, predictable pattern. You can do plan your charging. So I think we'll learn a lot from, from that. Yeah. Is the grid ready for this? Well, that's another question. I'm not an energy expert, but <laughs> I think they're preparing. I mean, I hear a lot of, uh, you know, preparation and it isn't all going to happen overnight. I think there are a little bit of exuberance that all oh, this is going to happen overnight. No, it's going to take some time. I mean, I think the predictions are in the U.S., especially we lag Europe and China, but, you know, it may be 10% of all vehicle sales by 2030-ish. So the last few minutes we have left, what other big trends out there do you see that we should be talking about or be aware of, Ashley? Well, I thought, think those, I saw there's like the short term, you know, what's the market going to do? Are consumers going to, um, you know, st just say, forget it, I can't find the vehicle I want and not buy anything right now? Um, and how does that affect overall sales? Um, and then there are the long-term things like EVs and AVs. I do think there's, uh, you know, change that's coming in the retailing uh, world. Uh, we, we've we moved to much more of a digital retailing model where you can do much of the uh, buying online and then the dealership is where you go pick it up or test drive it or whatever. And, and even during COVID, those happened at your house, the delivery and that kind of thing. So we're going to see some changes in that. And I think EVs will drive a lot of that change. Hmm. So do you think with all the changes the pandemic has wrought, it will ever go back to what it was pre-pandemic? I don't think so because it was headed all this way to begin with. You know, we do a study every year called Car Buyer Journey. And we we ask consumers, you know, what's your experience buying a car? And they kept telling us for years, we want to do the financing online. We want to do, you know, the shopping and the ordering online. We want to do as much of the process as we can online. We want to spend our time at the dealership in a different way, uh, test driving, getting to know the vehicle. Um, so they got what they wanted uh, during COVID. And by the way, dealers found out that it was, it was much more efficient to sell that way and much more profitable. So I don't think we're going back. Yeah. Well, then any of us that have ever walked onto a dealer's lot and been pounced on immediately, uh, I, I don't think anybody likes that part, right? No, they don't. When your whole thing is commission sales, that's what they do, right? So you got to do. And what we you may see do. some change in that. Who knows? So the way people are paid, that there's been a lot of talk about that. There's major staffing shortages at dealerships right now. We just did a study on that, so some of that may have to change. 